Hi there. So today I'm going to talk about um, bringing Blender's render passes into an outside compositor. Um, I'm going to do this using Natron. Now this can be done using After Effects or Blender's own compositor or Nuke or Fusion or any kind of compositor that you want to use. Um, but I just want to show you how you guys how to do it. Now, first of all, I'm going to quickly run over this Blender scene right here and note a couple of things that are really important uh, for when you'd like to render and passes and use these separately. Now, I generally use, uh, if we go over to the right here, I generally use the OpenEXR multi-layer format because it will actually allow you to save all those different passes within one EXR file, which I find a lot easier to use. But um, I mean, that's something you can choose for yourself. Now, the other thing I'll show you is that I have a bunch of passes right here. Um, and we have all the diffuse passes, glossy passes, transmission passes, and subsurface passes. Uh, I've got a combined pass, which is also called a beauty pass in many cases, a Z or depth pass, and an object index. Now, the object index, if we were to select one of these objects right here, so if we were to select the ball, for example, and I go into the object properties, you can see this has a pass index of one. Were I to select one of the other objects in the scene, uh, you'll see I have given it a different pass index. So that's what the um, object index is for. So we can create masks very easily for all the different objects in our scene that we've assigned a different number. Now, um, what does that look like when it's rendered? I'll actually close this a little bit and bring it up. So we here we have the final rendered image, which I'm supplying you guys with as well, so you can follow along, so you can just use this one. Um, and then within the render layer that we have here, we can see we actually have all those passes in there. Um, some of them look a little weird, uh, especially without compositing, but that's all right. Um, it's just so you guys get an idea of all the different passes you can use. And I've prepared the scene to have as many as possible um, within one simple scene. So we can actually get through the basics of compositing these back all together in Natron. So with that being said, let's head over to Natron. So here we are over in Natron. And um, just so you guys know, I'm using version 2.0.1 that was released recently. Um, just in case you're wondering, um, yeah. If you haven't done any compositing in Natron before, I suggest you check out my previous tutorial, which really goes over the basics. Um, and other than that, let's just get started. So to bring in my uh, EXR, I'm just gonna hit the R key and grab a read node really quickly. And we just find this, where are we, there we go. So if I just connect this to my viewer, you'll see we have the final rendered version and uh, the combined pass is the first thing that pops up. So we can see if we go into our output layers here in the read node, um, you'll actually have the depth pass, the diffuse color, diffuse direct, and all the other passes um, that we looked at before. So how do you actually go about combining these? Well, first off, we have to start with the basics. So let's start with the diffuse passes and bring those together. So first of all, we have our diffuse color or sorry, our diffuse direct, which is all of the direct light onto our diffuse surfaces. Um, if I were to copy and paste this node, I can do the same thing and just select the indirect pass. And if we hook that one up, then you can see this is all the indirect light. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste this same one, go back in and actually select the color node. Now, with these three set up, we can actually start compositing them together. So the first thing we want to do is actually grab these two. So our direct and indirect, and we're going to merge them together. So we can leave our direct in the background and merge over our indirect if we want to. Let's grab this really quickly. There we go. Uh, I like to hold down control and make these little dot nodes, um, which work really well for organizing your scene. So you get nice, kind of straight pipes running into your um, running into your merge node. It's a little clearer. And in the long run, once our tree or no tree gets a little bigger, um, it's actually a lot clearer to figure out what's going on. So by default, our merge node is actually set to over. And for this to work, we're going to have to set it to plus because we got to add these two passes together. Now, for now, there doesn't really seem that much to be happening yet. We're still getting kind of an odd result. And the reason for that is because we have to merge that third one into so hitting M again, I'm going to merge that one over that one. 
And if we have a look at it, again with it set to over, um, nothing's really happening. Now you might be thinking, all right, I'll set this one to plus, but as you'll see, it doesn't actually work out like that. What you have to do in this case is because we have all the lighting information from these two coming together, um, now we actually have to colorize it. So by setting this to multiply, you actually get all of your diffuse surfaces. And as you can see, we get the red of the bowl, we get all the colored cereal, and we get the wood texture in the background. Um, so with that done, let's just clean this up a little bit and we'll call this one diffuse direct diffuse indirect and diffuse color. Now what you can do um, once you've got these three done and as you can see we've merged them together correctly now which is quite nice. Um, we can start working on some of the other ones. So I'm going to copy these, paste them over here. Start with this one and we'll call this one uh, glossy direct glossy indirect and glossy color. Now, as you might have guessed, I'm going to start working on the glossiness part of the render. So all of our glossy objects, uh, so all of our reflections, like the bowl has reflection, the milk has some reflections, the spoon has reflection, and the table. Um, if we start at the beginning, now this one's still set to diffuse direct, so we're going to set this one to glossy direct. And as you can see, we have all these glossy surfaces. Same here with the indirect, so we'll set this to glossy indirect. There we go. And the third one, if we set this one to glossy color, now it's just a case of really doing the same thing that we did before. And I think I might have changed them by accident. So let's go back. This was direct. Double click this one. This was indirect. Where are we? There we go. And this one is glossy color. There we go. So now it's actually the correct ones. And as you can see, we got all of our direct reflections, all of our indirect reflections, and all of our glossiness information. So same thing really. I'm going to move these down a little bit. And there we go. And merge them together in the same way. So again for the first one we want to merge our first set of passes as plus because we got to add these two direct and indirect together. Again we get kind of a completely oversaturated, um, way too bright uh, set of glossy parameters. And that's why we multiply it again to this one. Same deal. Oh, so we got to switch these around. Come on. There we go. So B for the background, so whatever we've done before, pipe that in. A for the foreground. Again, this one's set to over. And we're going to set it to multiply again. And now, as you can see, we actually get all of the reflections in our scene the way they're supposed to look. So we can see we have a little bit of reflection on the spoon. We have quite a lot of reflection uh, going on over here on the table and uh, a lot on the bowl and some on the milk as well. Now, if we were to merge all of this stuff together, uh, which is what we should be doing because we want to merge the outputs of these and these, um, again, we can just use a merge node. Let's say this is going to be our background. So we'll start with our diffuse. If we look at the merge node here, we just have our diffuse. And if we hook up the end result of our glossiness, again, because it's set to over, we're only seeing the glossiness. So in this case, we're going to have to go back. Sorry, we're going to have to go back to plus here. And this is all set up again. So as you can see, if I were to disable this merge, for example, we're just getting our glossy. Now we have our, um, sorry, we're getting our diffuse rather. And with this on again, you can see we get all of our glossiness information back. So we get all of our reflections back. So that's the first part of that tree. And we can just keep going and keep going the way we've done so far. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Um, this time I'm going to copy everything. Why? Because Generally, it's the, um, the same process for all the passes that we saw in Blender here earlier. If we look at all of these, 
it's pretty much the same process for all of them. So I'm going to go back and call this one. Sorry, TRN for transmission direct TRN indirect and TRN. color. So you can start seeing why naming these is quite important. Um, we're getting quite a lot of nodes already. And I'll show you just another trick to clean this up in a little bit. So again, we start with the first node. We're gonna go for the direct. We're gonna go for the indirect. And we're gonna go for the color. So if we view these separately, um, the transmission direct pass is actually kind of an interesting one. It's pretty much impossible to have um, anything in this pass because it's all about refraction going in. So all of this is always going to be indirect light. Now, the reason I put this in was to show you that um, you don't really need it in the first place, uh, but it's good to know that it's in there if you have a very special use case or you've used some kind of a hack to be able to use it. Um, and the color as well. So what we want to do in this case is actually throw this one out, seeing that we're not really using it, and then just pipe this one in directly because it's completely black and there were no color values in it. So we don't want to waste another node and uh, Natron trying to do something because it doesn't really make sense. Now, if we look at this final result again, um, because we've multiplied these together by the color, you're actually getting the green um, sort of transparency of the spoon in there, which is nice. And the last thing that we have to do again is add another merge node and pipe this one in. There we go. Again, nothing's happening because we have to set it to plus again. So if I disable this one again, you'll see we actually have all the stuff on the inside of the spoon uh, happening so far. There we go. Move these up again a little bit and move the viewer down. So at this point, you've probably guessed it. Same thing once again. Feel free to skip a little bit further uh, once I've done. So I'm going to do the same thing subsurface, SS, direct, SSS, indirect, SSS, color. And here we go again. So this time it's subsurface. So we start with direct. That's what that looks like. Then subsurface indirect, where you can see all the color bleed from all the um, different pieces of cereal in the milk. And then the final one here would be subsurface color, which multiplies these all together. So if you look at the first merge node, here we are. You can see compared to just the direct subsurface, if I zoom in a little bit here, um, Let's see if I can set this to 100%. There we go. Uh, merge this together a little bit. You can see there's just a touch of extra color coming in, I hope. Um, you can actually see this on YouTube. Um, just a touch of extra color coming in, which is really, really nice, uh, which adds that subsurface scattering effect quite nicely. And what you might have noticed as well is that this pass can be very, very grainy. Um, I rendered this at quite a high uh, number of passes, so you, what you can do is blur that pass out a little bit as well if you want to, if you're still seeing some graininess. Um, and then multiply it all together by the color, uh, we actually get the nice subsurface scattering in here. So uh, if we were, bring, were to bring this one to get together again, uh, again, this one is our background, we're going to merge that one over, set this to plus again, because as you can see, nothing happening just yet. And there we go. So this is where it's really, really nice to actually have, uh, let's grab that one again, actually have a comparative um, beauty pass for you to look at. So I have in this read node, which I just brought in, I have just the uh, combined. And if I were to switch between these two, you'll see there is absolutely no difference between the two, which means um, using this as a reference, you can actually see we've put everything back together correctly again. Now that I know this is okay, I'm just going to throw this one out and we're done. So we have a lot of stuff going on here now. I'm just going to hit spacebar really quickly. Oh, sorry. Um, and you can actually maximize your node tree.
So a great node to use as well in this case um, is actually a backdrop node. And what this does is you can actually create different backdrops for the different groups um, you have set up in here. So if I put this one over here and make it just a touch bigger, um, you can see all the nodes contained within this backdrop. Um, if I were to move this backdrop, now move together. So it's a really easy, quick way of um, organizing your nodes as well, which I was talking about earlier. And if we double click this and go back in um, and actually call this Diffuse, you can see um, we now have our diffuse nodes. You can even give it a custom color if you wanted to. Uh, let's say diffuse is yellow in this case, um, which keeps things uh, a lot more organized. Now the yellow might be a bit much even, so let's choose slightly a darker color. Let's maybe go for some kind of dark blue. Ah, that's fine. And let's in backdrop nodes again. So let me just undo that one and bring it in over here because once your um, backdrop actually contains the nodes that you want to contain, what if I select these and hit backdrop? There we go. So with those nodes selected, it actually automatically adds a backdrop around them, which is quite nice. So let's move this one up. Now I'm not going to super organize these because I don't want to bore you guys, but call this glossy. So backdrop again and call these transmission there we go and the final backdrop call this surface there we go so we can organize these just a little bit more we bring this one up bring this one down align our merge nodes and our little dot nodes and bring these ones down as well. All right, there we are. So, all right, so we've got all of them now organized. I'm not going to give all of them different colors. We know what we're doing so far. So I'm just going to close these off. There we go. If you have the little X sign next to the uh, number of nodes that you want in here, you can clear all of them. So we can start fresh again with our setup. Because so far, what have we done? Well, we've brought all of these nodes together. Um, just to recreate our image. This isn't really that interesting. Um, if you liked your image the way it was before and you would just want to do some color corrections, then this might not be necessary. But a really interesting thing um, you can do with these passes now that we have these is there's a couple of other ones that I brought in as well. So if I hit R again and read this one again, then if we go for the, um, where are we? Index pass, for example. So this looks just plain white, um, unfortunately. And we're actually gonna have to add a node in after this to get our passes back. Now this is also a reason why I'm using Natron2 um, because there's a node in here that does that quite well. Uh, and if you just type in the letter Z, you'll see um, there's a Z mask in here. And what that does, it actually has you, uh, it actually allows you to pick a, um, value from those passes. So remember I said when we were back in Blender uh, and I went to my bowl here, remember we talked about this being pass index number one? Well, actually, if we go back into Natron now, um, you can see that uh, this center value is one. So it's actually selecting our bowl. If I set this to two, this is what I've set up in Blender. This is my spoon. If I set this to three, this is um, my wood. If I set this to four, then it's my milk, and then I had, um, for all the different colors of cereal, I've had some other numbers set up as well. So five, six, seven, I don't know, eight is another color. Eight as well, nine, there we go, 10. So we've got 10 masks, I believe, yeah, 11 is zero. So let's start at the beginning. So we'll start with the bowl. So that we have this mask, for example. Um, if we were to go into this color pass, and have a look at it, our diffuse color pass. This is what's giving everything um, the correct color in our in our scene. So let's say I wanted to color correct this one, for example, and I wanted to create the just color correct pieces of the bowl and have it be a little different kind of shade of red or maybe an even completely different kind of color. Now what I could do is um, if I hit the C key and add a color correct node in between here, 
and I keep an eye on my final viewer, and my keyboard seems to be freaking out, sorry about that. Um, so if we um, take this mask, for example, and we pipe it into the Z mask, and um, we actually start color correcting a little bit, then let's see. Let's say I take down the saturation. Now nothing's really happening just yet um, because we've got the, the switch one, which is in the Z mask set to alpha, and we just need to change it to R, G, or P because we've got a white mask. Then you can actually see I can color correct this separately. So I can either boost the saturation um, or bring it down, maybe change the contrast a little bit and change the bowl into a slightly different color. So even after I've rendered without having to re-render, if I were to disable this, and actually really go in and tweak it a little bit. Now, if you really, really wanted to, let's say I move this up and just make this a touch bigger, you could go into um, changing the actual color of it as well. So if we have um, HSV tool, which is hue, saturation, uh, and value, so brightness, I believe, uh, you could actually change the hue of the bowl as well. Don't forget, you have to plug in the mask again, obviously, as I forgot to do here, and set this to one of the R, G, or B channels. And you can see we can actually color correct the bowl all by itself. Now, even though this is a really great tool and it works quite well, you have to remember a couple of things. For example, in the transmission part of our spoon, we still have sort of a red bowl reflecting. Um, and even though we don't really see quite a lot of reflections on the, uh, on the table itself, this is also reflecting a red ball. So you have to be kind of conscious about what you can change after the fact. And uh, usually little changes aren't too bad, but um, if you go way too overboard, then things might start looking out of place. Now in this case, we could probably get away with uh, color correcting it quite heavily like this, maybe change it into a purple ball, uh, just to give you an idea. So this opens up all kinds of possibilities, um, which is great because let's say I have my table, for example, and I would really, if we have to, if we go have a look at my table here, um, if we look at some of these reflections, what I would really like to do is actually boost, um, or not boost, bring down some of the reflections on the table itself. So if we look at all of this stuff being uh, reflected in our glossy direct pass, we can actually do the same thing. Now, I'm going to add in, let's say, a grade node here. Um, I'm going to create a second Z mask. Plug in the source over here. Um, if we run this through here, you can see how these node trees start getting a little bit more, um, a little bigger, and organization is definitely key. Now I'm doing this quickly. Uh, so you guys can follow along what I'm doing. So normally I would organize this a little bit more, but it's not looking too bad just yet. So again, with this grade node, uh, this is actually what we're seeing. So I wanna hit one on my final merge node again to see my result. And in this grade node, again, pipe in the mask, uh, only we haven't set which one we wanna do. So let's see, was two our table? No, two was our spoon, three is our table, there we go. So now we've got a mask for the table. And if we start, there goes my keyboard again. And if we start grading now, again, nothing's gonna happen just yet because we have to set this to one of the color channels for the mask. And uh, let's say I want to multiply this down. So I actually wanna have, have less of a gloss and I can just bring it down and you'll see the table becomes a lot rougher already. Multiply it up, we can actually have a really, really glossy table coming in. Uh, because of that mask. So you still get a lot of um, a lot of control after the fact. So now we've actually set up um, our nodes to be able to work uh, for us. So it's nice, we can change all these different things. Let's say we wanna change the color of the spoon, for example, um, which is mainly in the transmission layer here. So if we look at it here, this is actually green. If we look at it here, this is green as well. So we might have to apply it to both of them. Uh, so again, let's copy and paste one of these Z masks, pipe that into our original footage. Um, so this is the third one. I'm going to organize this a little bit as well. Have this move over. I mean, you can organize these any way you want, um, but this is just the way I like to do it. 
So again, uh, let's go into our hue saturation and mask this in. Once again, we want to make sure that we're using one of the R, G, or B channels from the mask. And let's start playing with this hue as well. So as you can see, not a lot is changing. And the reason for that is we're actually multiplying this original pass by a color. So if we were to um, take this hue saturation value tool out, oh, sorry, take it out again, plug it into here, and then use that as a mask, let's see if we actually get some something going on here. Still nothing. So because they're both green, we'll probably just have to plug it into both of them. Oh, and of course, nothing's going on because we haven't set our value correctly. So I was doing color corrections because I copied and pasted this. Not on the spoon, so there you go. So you have to keep an eye on it um, to make sure. So let's disable this one. See what happens when we just change the one. So when we change the color in this one, uh, you can actually get a different colored spoon as well, which is quite nice. I'm gonna throw this one out for now and hook these back up. There we go. So now we've got a red spoon um, and we started completely differently. And this is just what the uh, what these render passes can do. So to summarize, um, we have all our passes here. Diffuse, glossy, transmission, subsurface. We used our index pass um, to actually grab some of these masks that we pre-made and that Blender did for us. So this is really nice. Um, you can see you can get a lot of use out of this. If I just set this to full screen. You can see we changed com from a completely different setup and we managed to um, mess with a lot of stuff in our scene. And this is just very simply, I mean, we could go in and mess with the reflections of our bowl. We could go in and mess with some of the subsurface stuff. Um, yeah, you could do anything you want really with these passes. And uh, yeah, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, yes, it does take a little bit of setup as we've seen again in this, in this node setup. But uh, on the other hand, it gives you a lot of control after the fact, especially if you're working for somebody and they need um, things to change afterward, you need to change colors. You're gonna be really happy that you don't have to re-render everything in 3D and you can just do it in 2D afterwards. And um, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found, uh, got some good information out of it, put it that way. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.